So for those of you that have already watched uh, my last two videos, bear with me. I'll probably be repeating myself a little bit. But um, I really want to make sure that I'm prepared for my presentation tomorrow. And I want to know how much time it takes me to work through this material. Um, so the paper is called On the Matter of Life. And matter here has a dual meaning. It's kind of a play on words. Um, the paper is on the matter of life in the sense that it's basically a discussion of biology um, as it has developed through uh, what Gebser calls the mental mutation of consciousness, um, both through the efficient and deficient phases. Um, it's also about how, in order to account for life, science needs to reevaluate and reappraise its uh, metaphysical understanding of matter, of the material world. Um, so, as I said, I'm tracing in this paper the development of biology through the mental structure of consciousness, beginning with Plato and Aristotle, uh, through Kant, Paley, and Darwin, on to Dennett and Dawkins, and finally to Whitehead and Varela. Um, and now, the reason I think we need to or I think science needs to reevaluate its metaphysical assumptions, uh, shifting from a materialistic ontology to an organismic ontology, is that um, mechanistic biology posits that organisms can be understood merely in terms of material and efficient causation. Um, and I don't think that this is an adequate way to account for life. Um, so, by material causation, mechanistic biologists are still working from within the Newtonian paradigm, where matter is understood as inert, purposeless, unfeeling, lacking any intrinsic propensity to organize. Uh, basically, it's a featureless substance. And of course, within the, the past century, physics has completely moved out of the classical uh, picture of, of matter in the physical world. Um, you know, relativity has shown us that matter is basically energy. Quantum physics has shown that um, it's more, matter is more of a process, a series of events, not so much uh, these inert, made up of these inert substantial components. Um, so in that sense, what biology understands as the material cause of organisms is, is out of date. Um, but as far as efficient causation goes, mechanistic biologists attempt to reduce the formal and final causes, of which Aristotle described, to some mechanical process of the exchange of forces between um, substances, between inert particles or um, gears or parts of some kind. So in the case of the formal cause, mechanistic biology attempts to reduce them to the chance result of natural selection by a pre-given environment. And an example of this would be that the shape of a finch's beak is not the result of any creativity internal to the organization of the creature itself, but rather is the result of random mutation externally selected by the environment um, that happened to allow the bird to survive. So the only internal principle um, of the organism itself is this random mutation of, you know, um, as the result of the genetic code not replicating itself with perfect fidelity and different finches will have slightly different shaped beaks and in a purely passive manner they're selected by the environment um, based on which finch happens to survive better which beak happens just by accident to be shaped in such a way that it allows them to um, get the pulp out of a seed or, or what have you so the formal cause, the shape of the beak, is thereby reduced to this external mechanical principle of selection. Uh, when it comes to final causes in teleology, um, mechanistic biology reduces it to an appearance which is generated by this process of adaptation I just described, um, which human language and observation cannot help but describe as purposeful, um, even though no purpose is, is understood as being imminent or intrinsic to the organism itself. So in other words, when a biologist talks about a bacterium swimming up a sucrose gradient because it is hungry, that because is what Kant would call a regulative principle 
of our judgment. It's something that we project onto the behavior of the organism because we as human beings with this special quality of, um, of understanding um, cannot help but interpret the world through. So you can see that there's this dualism between human consciousness and the rest of nature uh, established by you know, um, the scientific metaphysical assumption that knowledge must be objective, meaning it, it must be free of any subjectivity. So if we were to understand organisms as possessing their own um, subjective purposes, it would be violating this metaphysical principle. Um, and mechanistic biologists call this idea teleonomy, the idea that uh, organisms appear to be acting purposely even though it's only a projection of our human way of understanding their behavior. <clears throat> so, um, let's go back now to the origin of biology which began at um, the origin of the mental mutation of consciousness back in ancient Greece with Plato and Aristotle. Uh, Plato thought that the purposes of nature were external, in other words, imposed upon organisms from outside by a creator. Um, whereas Aristotle saw that the forms and purposes of organisms were actually internal or intrinsic to the organisms themselves, such that the form and the matter of an organism were united in some important sense. So Aristotle's understanding of teleology was, was that it was imminent in nature, in organisms, whereas Plato's was that it was transcendent and imposed from outside. Um, and when we move forward a few thousand years to Darwin and um, William Paley, who Darwin was heavily influenced by, we see this, this platonic paradigm still operating. Um, in the sense that Paley, in his famous argument from design, recognized that certain artifacts, uh, whether they're mechanical in the sense of a, a clock or a watch or an organism, because Paley thought that there was no essential difference between an organism and a watch. They're made up of parts which serve a common function. Um, Paley recognized that, that there was an, a principle of design at work here, um, and, you know, this was because the, the different body parts of an organism somehow fit the environment which it needed to survive within. And Paley's way of explaining this was that the creator designed the parts to operate in such an efficient way. Um, Darwin accepted part of this explanation. He just shifted um, where the imposition of design came from. Rather than saying it came from a transcendent god, Darwin said it came from a transcendent material world, from a pre-given environment. Um, so there's still Paley and Darwin, though Paley is a theologian and Darwin a, a natural philosopher or scientist. They both understand the form and purpose of an organism as imposed upon it from outside. The only difference is where this imposition comes from, either a supernatural transcendent creator or a transcendent pre-given environment. Um, Kant, who you know was, was alive before Darwin, recognized that really we can't understand organisms uh, as if they were machines. So he rejects the platonic paradigm of, of the organism as being uh, just an artifact with, with its form and purpose imposed from a transcendent realm, whether it be the environment or God. Um, instead, Kant coined this term self-organization because he saw in the behavior and the composition um, of organisms a certain um, circular causality such that each of the components operated for each of the other components in order to produce the whole organism. And this isn't true in the case of any other machine. Uh, in a machine, the parts exist independently of one another, um, and they don't, um, they, they operate in a linear fashion. 